uh, Mike, how is Will? Have you gotten the test results back? And depending on his health, is it, uh, it, do you have to weigh the fact that you're eliminated on whether or not you put him on the well, field? Well, I, I don't think that that uh, necessarily weighs into, you know, the factor, the decision right now. I want to make sure that one, that he can protect himself, uh, that he can do his job up to the expectations uh, that we have and that uh, that he, you know, really the most important thing is that that any player can protect themselves out there when, uh, you know, during a game. So it's Monday right now. You know, he's sore, obviously, like a lot of guys. And uh, we'll see, you know, how things go. Uh, does it factor in maybe to a guy like Jeff or somebody like that who was expected to miss some time, maybe could have forced his way back in had you guys needed him for a playoff push, but now how, how does that change your... Well, I don't know if, if, you know, I think everybody that's out is uh, doing everything they can to, to get back until, you know, we have to uh, or decide to put them on injured reserve for... Uh, which would, you know, at this point in time, end their season. So that hasn't happened. Um, so I know that, that everybody that, that wasn't healthy enough to play in the game is is doing everything they can to get back and, and realizing that, uh, you know, every every snap is, is meaningful. It means something to somebody. And, you know, so I wouldn't exclude Jeff from that or anybody else. If they can, if they can play, we want them to play. Sure. Will's injury to what Ryan went through these last couple of years? Uh, I think the mechanism is the same as similar and you know those are those are things that you know make it difficult and you know those are things that come up you know as you're you know getting tackled or in a pile or anything like that. Is that how you deal with that ankle? Yeah, say you know, I mean just the kind of same thing he has been dealing with. I guess as far as run defense goes, how many missed tackles did you count? And, and do you well, there was a handful, but there was also some. You know, I don't want to, you know, get this, you know, but third and fifteen, and they handed off for fourteen yards. You know, there was a couple of those third down and long situations where some of those yards were were had. There were some some snaps on first and second down and normal down and distances that that weren't good enough, but then there was also, you know, a, a lot that were. So um, I think some of the numbers, um, and again, I don't have a percentage, but there's somewhere on third and long where they hand it off and we're in a substituted defense. And, you know, either way, it's got to be better. There were some missed tackles and, you know, we, we have to be better all the way around in all three phases. What about on the interior uh, of the D line? Like it seemed like a lot of the runs were between the tackles. What, what was happening there? Well, the couple that were in, in inside were, um, you know, the third and long where, you know, Nico and Arden are playing on third down. There was another, you know, 12-yard gain backed up on the, you know, two-yard line that, you know, went inside that, you know, got to fit, get off blocks and, and tackle. Um, you know, and then there were some good snaps where they tried to cut back and Marlon or Jaleel or, you know, Keandre or, you know, one of those guys inside were there. At what point is determination to establish the run turn into a stubbornness to do something that's been futile? Well, we don't ever want to be uh, stubborn, but also knowing that, you know, some of those things that allow us to, to gain yards downfield in the play pass game are also – uh, set up through through that run game and you know so I don't think it's a stubbornness we have to be balanced we have to use those formations and those running plays um, you know to, to set up some of those play passes down the field and you know be able to uh, you know create good pockets for the quarterback so that they can deliver the football so whoever's in there can can step up and throw the ball downfield you know, like we did a couple of times yesterday and that we have done, you know, in the past. And then we'll have to just try to stay as balanced as possible and let those things marry with each other. Got a, the offensive turn. line got a makeover in the offseason and it hasn't necessarily translated into better play. 
do you need to maybe reevaluate uh, what you look for in offensive linemen and how they play? Well, we're just focused on this week right now, and we'll worry about and be as diligent as we can in uh, evaluation at every position, um, you know, in the off season. But you know, right now we're focused on and, and continuing to, to find ways to improve, and most importantly, find ways to win. And then in the evaluation process, uh, that'll that'll come after the season. Line and asked about the offseason, kind of always pivot every time, you know, worried about the next game. Or Paul asked yesterday about the offensive line and just talked about protecting as opposed to what happened in the offseason. Is, is the accountability for the fans about what happened with the offensive line this year that kind of dodging a little bit? No. With the offensive line, like, and talking to some of them, they, they said that it wasn't anything new that they saw, but they did have problems communicating and, and just picking up assignments. Is that something that, like, how do you handle the accountability for that? Is that the players? Is that the coaching staff collective? How do you handle that? It, it's all of it. it. It's every single one of us. It starts with me, and, you know, we, we knew that this was a fast defense. Like, you know, there's good players. You, know. you like to watch tape, you know, Malik Collins and, you know, Sheldon Rankins, like we knew where they were going to be. And, and if you're not good with your communications or staying, you know, good on your combinations, they create penetration, uh, which, which then makes you loose and everything else. So um, we, we've said this, like there's a call that goes in. At that point in time, it's on the 11 players on, on each, uh, in each phase to communicate to work together with somebody, to identify the, the mic, to know your assignment, to strain, to do everything that you can, to put yourself in a position to protect the guy with the ball, whether it's a run, whether it's a keeper, whether it's a play pass, like, that's how it goes down, that the coach tries to give them as many details throughout the week and show them some things that, that are gonna help them. Um, and, and then you have to go out and if there's new looks that you see, then you come over on the sidelines and you make adjustments or you, hey, this is what's happening now. I know we had talked about this, but you know, for the most part, you know, they were pretty much, that was the structure that we had seen uh, in the previous weeks. When they're running 17 times for 12 yards on first down, is that setting up play action? Are people biting on that or are they having a fine time stopping the run with what they have up front? Did it establish anything for you to do? In play action? Well, we hit a strike uh, behind the linebackers, you know, late in the game um, to Hopkins. So it, it must have done something. I mean, there was. Um, was that trade off worth it? I, again, we, we didn't win the game. And, you know, you have to understand that there's some of these play pass protections are also advantageous to allowing the quarterback to move the spot, to, to change his launch. Uh, location and you know give us an opportunity to to protect but also still run a, a you know a route that we think is going to be good versus their coverage well, what's the trade-off there in terms of the the frequent conversations we had about not being behind the sticks when out of all of those first downs you're coming out generally at second and ten or, or worse well that was you know yesterday we've you know done well and you know again previous weeks of you know, our average gain on, on first down, whether that be running or throwing it, uh, and try to stay as uh, balanced as possible. Um, and also try to do, uh, you know, possess the football, try to find ways to win a football game, and you know, it didn't work out yesterday. Starts in how, many, how much freedom does Will have at the line of scrimmage, and has he exercised it a lot to this point in terms of, Getting you in the right plays, I think specifically I'm thinking of a couple of instances yesterday where it looked like they were bringing run pressures and you essentially ran into it. At the yeah, and, and I think that there is some of that uh, that we have to be able to um, expand on or at least, you know, can it and, and try to, you know, maybe get it to the other side um, to give us a little bit of better angle. Um, you know, and there's some, you know, relief throws that we can make and things that are in there and you know, I think it's important just to, you know, as long as everybody's on the same page uh, between him and the receivers or him and the offensive line and what we're trying to do, um, 
that that's what's most important and uh you know, we'll continue to work on that. Mike Woodlitz yeah. said to your tarp getting released, and did he ask for his release at all? Um, you know, I think we can touch on some of those personnel decisions, you know, at the end of the season. But, uh, you know, we're excited about the guys that are here now and, and working with them and moving towards them and, you know, finding those guys that, uh, that we can work with. I like say to all the guys, Mike, about finishing the season strong the right well, way after being eliminated. Yeah, I, I think that that's probably going to be something I'll try to, you know, make sure uh, I'm consistent with when when they come in here, um, you know, on Wednesday and making sure that, uh, you know, it's not too watered down. I don't know. It's 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 new. It's a new experience for me, you know, so I'll have to give it some thought and try to, you know, Make sure that we're doing everything that we can to, to continue to try to teach them, to develop them, you know, inspire the ones uh, the best that we can. Mike, are Garrett's days as an elite running back in the NFL over? Uh, I don't think that, you know. I think that, you know, that we understand that Derek's got a certain running style and great skill set. And, you know, we have to be able to, to get him going and give him some space and get him to the second level. And he in turn has to be able to, you know, help you know, the, the line, help the receivers, help the tight end. You know, it all goes hand in hand. You don't just hand it to a guy and they beat three people. But you know, there's also times where guys make a great cut or guys make a guy miss or Derek Stiff Farms a guy. You know, so certainly after yesterday, nobody was was good enough. Um, everybody involved. All seven sacks yesterday were in the second half and overtime. Was there something that they did that made an adjustment that allowed them to get there? Or was it more breakdowns on that from the second half that didn't occur in the first half? Well, well they had, you know, two, um, you know, two through three quarters. Um, you know, one came. Um, you know, down in the red zone, I would say that, uh, you know, we'll, we're trying to hit one. We're trying to play that we had designed from before, and, you know, they didn't bite on it. And I will probably waited it out a half a count too late, and it wasn't there. Would have liked for Jalen to block a little bit longer, but maybe we can help them out and just say, hey, they got us. They didn't bite up on, you know, the fake. Um, you know, you go by case by case basis. There were some that, you know, tried to throw the ball on first and ten one time and wasn't open, so it was a sack. So, you know, it's it's a lot of things. Third down, they show up third and long. You know, so it's just got to be, you know, cleaner. Um, you know, with, with with everybody involved, with the, you know, how quickly we we get open, the, the concepts that we're giving them, how quickly we get open as receivers. Uh, how long and how well we block, um, you know, the, the quarterback's movement in the pocket, you know, all those little things that, again, that 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 all goes into it. I mean, yeah, there's times where we got beat, uh, but there's also a, a play and a and a process to the entire operation. You're Mike, when you starting two rookies on the left side of your offensive line that seemed to have a rough <clears> day yesterday. A lot of teaching tape there, and what's the message to them as they bounce back? Uh, they'll keep working, they'll keep fighting, keep improving, try to, you know, keep taking the little details, the technique, and, you know, it's, it's not easy developing young offensive linemen, but we'll, you know, at, at this point in time in the season is what I'm saying with the amount of reps and, you know, where they're at physically, but, you know, working together is something that's critical, you know, using length, you know, not not letting him get into your body, you know. But then they had some snaps where they where they blocked him well too, you know. Did you think that, that last sack of Levis was a hip drop and I wonder if you had any more thoughts on on that down that I guess the NFL is looking to, to ban it next year. Yeah, I don't have any you know. It was a sack that led to in a player getting injured. Levis got talked about the interception and, and how the corner kinda came off of Burks on, on the deep route and he had an alert, but he, he threw it to Hopkins. 
How do you take him through that whole process of, okay, I know Hopkins is a guy that you want to throw it to, but, you know, look at other options as well. I mean, I think just, you know, there's a, there's a primary and there's obviously um, things that you have to do before you throw it there. Make sure you're looking out in front of the crosser and, you know, understand that you, you have time there to set up and, you know, wasn't, you know, we're trying to protect you to, to get to the edge and allow you to set up and, you know, maybe by doing that he would be able to see trail and I know that he stayed on the move and, you know, thought he had hop and, you know, that's, you know, we got to do a better job of, of protecting the football. When it's all about, Mike, when it's all about winning, how frustrating is it for you, like, on Sunday nights when you've lost overtime games at home when there was a missed extra point involved? Well, whether you miss an extra point, whether you don't intercept the football, whether you throw an interception, all those things contribute, whether you have a penalty, uh, you know, on a punt that's backed up. Like, there's a bunch of plays that contribute uh, to that. I would say that losing is, is devastating. Um, you know, it's uh, – you know, again, you just the players put a lot into it. You know, they play hard. You know, being close isn't isn't good enough. Everybody feels better um, about the work that you put in when you win, uh, and you want that you want the players that that go out there and work for you and play for you to have success. You want them to 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 feel that. You know, and, and then their bodies don't hurt so bad, and uh, and they come to work, and, and then we all come to work. You might be too. PATs away from two, two more wins. Have they thought about that in terms of how close you are to a different story? I think about a lot of things, you know. So, can make points up other ways. You know, Nick's been really good for us. Um, I'm sure he'd like to have that kick back yesterday. He'd like to have a lot of things back. How this week's or these next three weeks are kind of a new experience for you as a head coach. How difficult do you expect it, or do you expect it to be difficult to keep the same no. messaging and kind no, of? No, well, I don't back. know what the messaging is going to be. You know, it's just you know we'll figure that out and we'll try to we'll get them as prepared. We'll figure out who's available, who we need. Um, you know, to make sure that uh, you know our guys are ready once we determine who who that's going to be. To make sure that they're ready and that they all prepare as starters and. You know, some of these, a lot of these guys are just getting their first opportunity of playing with us or playing with anybody. Challenge like keeping the morale where it needs to be in these last three weeks. Uh, you know, I'm gonna rely on the assistant coaches, rely on our leaders. Um, be great every day. Uh, don't be phony. Um, you know, be as authentic as as possible, and uh, and keep teaching them uh, the things that are gonna help them. You talked about guys and how much you expect out of the defensive line because of the money that you pay those players. Using the 11th pick on Peter, are you disappointed with where his play is right now? Um, no, I think Peter's been uh, been working hard, and you know, again, the the player evaluation. You know, we're we're putting a team together, and um, Peter works. Peter's improved. Not sure what the the first part of your question had anything to do with with Peter, but uh, we're just okay. Um, we all have high expectations. That's that's the nature of this business, and and we understand that, and we need to uh, continue to raise expectations uh, with, with whoever is out there. Like we without uses. a playoffs to coach for, I guess now or these weeks that I guess you have to rely on why you got into coaching in the first place and competitiveness and, and love for the little things within a season? Well, certainly love football. I love uh, helping players. I remember that. Remember why you got into this and uh, watching them improve and have success and, uh, you know, the, the, you know, embracing their competitive spirit and, and making sure that, uh, that we're doing everything that we can to put them in the best positions to go out and, and, and enjoy it, but and enjoy it from, you know, having success and, and winning and making plays and, you know, 
It's, it's a fine line each and every week. Do you uh, use these last three games maybe to take a look at guys like Caleb Murphy or Otis Reese and some, some of them beyond maybe just special teams? I mean, potentially, but, you know, I don't – not ready to answer that, you know. If Will can't go, is it, is it simply Ryan or do you have to consider really – uh, I don't think, you know, I, Ryan would, you know, we'll see where we're at based on Will's health and we'll keep you updated. Which, uh, any idea if Murphy Bunting's going to miss any time? I'm sure every player that didn't finish the game could probably miss some time and he was one of those players. So we'll have to be ready for where he's at uh, Wednesday at practice and, and moving forward. But, you know, when you're not able to finish, you know, then then you have to, you know, then there's always concern. There's guys sometimes that finish the game uh, and then come in with something, and then there's guys that leave the game. So uh, I know that he wished he could have tried to finish, but that wasn't going to be a possibility. Are you understanding that the full review will come at the end of the season, but yesterday there was some finality knowing you can't make the playoffs. When you went home last night or came in this morning, is there some – I guess, theme that you think about of why this season is where it is right now earlier than you expected? No. No, we, we, uh, we're, we're focused on, you know, I appreciate the, the, the question. I do. I just, uh, we're, we're focused on, on what we have to do today, on who's injured and how they feel and how many guys are sick with the flu and all this other stuff. That's, that's my focus is not, you know, going back and, you know, and evaluating that right now. All right, there's two more home games left, and you're eliminated from the playoffs. You talked about high expectations. For f what would be the team's message to the fans about the two home games to finish out the season and the belief in the program going forward into future seasons? Well, I think the belief going forward, you know, we we'll, can always discuss that. I mean, we, when our guys play hard, if, our, if you feel like our guys loaf, uh, consistently, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of snaps in the game. We can all pick them out, but you know, when we take the ball there at the end and you know, three negative plays on defense that you know from guys that maybe have been here on the practice squad or just got here, um, you know, and, and obviously, the playing with great effort is going to rally, um, you know, a fan base. Winning always is going to be the forefront of what we do. And if we can, you know, eliminate some of the the plays that that are going to get us beat, and uh, you know, there's still good football in there. There is. It's all over the place. We go down. We convert a fourth and one on first drive of the game. Hit a couple X plays. Third and ten. They jump off sides. We snap the ball. Will looks for the flag. We throw it down there to the two yard line, and we score. Like that. That's what good football teams do. But then there's just, you know, there's, there's the plays that, you know, aren't consistent enough and not efficient enough defensively. You know, get an interception, get a third down stop, you know. But then we give up some plays that, uh, that cost us. Special teams, we do a good job. We're protecting a punter. Uh, I didn't get a penalty uh, at a critical time in the game. So uh, there, there's a lot of good in there. And, again, I know that this sounds like it sounded a couple weeks ago. You know, but unfortunately, there's just a lot of uh, too many too many examples of the bad football that that ultimately you can't overcome.